<laughs> good evening, good afternoon, good morning, wherever you may be today. Hope you're all doing okay there, out there into the internet world. It's a little bit of an improvisation. I've just been working on that a little bit beforehand. Usually I've been doing these uh, live streams on Sunday, but I thought today would be a little bit of a change. Beautiful day here in Canada. All right, we've already got uh, a first super chat here from uh, Stefan. Thank you so much. Appreciate that. You want to hear Tico's Blues or, or Zim Blues? Uh, let's see. I think I could probably, probably do... I definitely have Zim Blues a little bit more rehearsed, uh, so I might want to do that one. Uh, unless you want to hear bits and pieces of both, I could definitely do that. But uh, otherwise, let me just do some sound mixing here to make sure I don't clip for this one. But yeah, let's try some Zim Blues. Um, I really haven't been playing too much finger style. I've really been focusing on the loop pedal stuff. I've just been having so much fun with that. But here goes uh, Zim Blues, dedicated to um, a very beautiful time that I had the uh, pleasure to, to kind of have uh, going to uh, Zimbabwe uh, back in 2016, I think. Uh, I was invited to go there and uh, represent Canada in this big uh, festival there. And this was the song that was kind of born from that whole experience.
little bit of Zim Blues there. Thank you, Stefan. Stefan, 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 uh, for that super chat. So I guess, uh, yeah, if anyone does want to hear any requests, uh, feel free to uh, do some super chats, and I'll do my best uh, to my ability, as best as my ability, to play any songs that you might want to hear. Uh, by any songs, I really just mean songs that I know, uh, which are mostly my own songs. <laughs> I think I forgot a bit there. Yeah. I guess that is the real ending. <laughs> a little bit of a blues there. Definitely love the blues myself, but got two of those songs, Zim Blues uh, or uh, Tico's Blues as well. Has that sort of 6-8 feel to it. Anyway, hopefully you guys can hear me okay. I did some slight adjustments uh, compared to last time, so hopefully the, the sound level is okay and it's not, not too muffled. But yeah, let me know where you guys are tuning in from. I'd love to know which country or which city you guys are in right now. question from Afif. Uh, where do you get your guitar? It's very comfortable. I loved it. Thank you. So this guitar here is a uh, Cole Clark uh, guitar. It's my Cole Clark signature uh, guitar. Uh, it's a beautiful guitar. So most of what you're hearing is probably the three-way pickup system inside of this guitar right now. So you're hearing a blend of three different elements. You got a bass dedicated specifically from the piezo the mid-range specifically from this transducer that's placed right around here and then you've got kind of the the high end coming from the microphone uh, so it's the blend of all three cool so we got some from europe some from the states yeah so if you are i see a few patrons here who are members of my patreon page so uh Feel free to ask any questions as I play throughout this next hour and a bit or so. If you have any questions, I'll do my best to answer uh, anything you guys might have. It's basically an ask me anything, so you guys can ask me whatever you'd like. Been, uh, working on some loops uh, very specifically for today I made two loops um, more or less stuff that I've posted uh, little short clips that I've done on Instagram if you're following on Instagram you would have probably heard some of some of those ideas but I'll, I'll get into those uh, a little bit later but I made two two loops ready to go so I want to try those out with you guys today Okay, so we got a couple of questions here. We got a question question from Philip here. Uh, could you tell us a little of the evolution of Cold Arrival and play some of it if you want? Yeah, sure. Uh, Cold Arrival um, is, is actually one of the first percussive songs that I wrote on the guitar. And the story behind that is that I, I lived in Texas for seven and a half years uh, before coming to Canada. And, uh, you know, it was not only culture shock moving to Canada, uh, but it was also a weather shock as well. So, you know, going from like 100 degrees, you know, Fahrenheit, going into like minus 32 <laughs> in the middle of winter, it was a bit of a shock. So that, that, that shock, that initial shock did stay for a little bit longer than I had hoped. <laughs> but, uh, and then it was that that it kind of inspired uh, the elements of Cold Revival. But not only that, but Cold Revival also had a, uh, there was a darkness to that song as well because I was going through a very difficult time. I didn't really want to be in Canada at the time. Uh, it was a very difficult time for my family and I because we came here as refugees 
And so this song was kind of my way of accepting the anger, accepting everything that was going on in, in my life. And, uh, you know, even when, when I play it, there's, there's an aggressive, in my opinion, an, an aggressive tone to it. there it's a it's a good four and a half minute long song the full thing but if you really want to hear it you could you could probably just uh, go online a little bit and search for that song I probably played it much better back then uh, but I, I did work on a new version of this piece which I'm sure will be out at some point I've got a lot of songs that I've kind of uh, kind of come back to recently and just uh, touched up a little bit I tend to do that uh, with new information that I gather over the years uh, musical knowledge and, and new experiences and I try to put that into older songs sometimes so Thank you for that question, Philip. Appreciate it. So here's a question from Stefan. Uh, what are your thoughts about fan fret acoustic guitars? Uh, I've tried a couple of them, and they feel great. They feel fine. There's uh, nothing bad, I have to say, on them. Um, they're great, I think, I guess, typically best used for alternate tunings, I guess, or if you're going really low on, on some of the, uh, the lower strings, which the lowest I go is B, which is very low, um, but I don't really play in that tuning too much. And typically if I go to that tuning, I tend to have to adjust the truss rod a little bit if I'm recording. Uh, otherwise, you're gonna get a lot of buzz and I uh, don't really want that. So that that's, uh, uh, again, I have nothing against them, but uh, and I've, I've definitely played on them and they, they take a bit of time to get used to. But yeah, no, I, I think they're, they're, they're still a lot of fun to play with. And, it's not too much different from a regular, you know, I don't even know what this would be called, but a regular guitar here, like this. So there was a, a loop that I came up with, um, let me show you guys, that was very uh, happy and very uplifting. That I, I kind of want to just jam over top here. And what we might want to do at the end is uh, I might just ask you guys to recommend some chords for me to do a loop. Uh, so you guys will have that uh, control over that, over what sort of potential ideas I might do. So stay tuned for that. But now I just want to do this little loop that I just kind of came up with here. These are very sort of simple chords here. It's like a one, four, five basically in E. And so I wrote a melody over this that was just that just was so feel good for me. And it's summer here, you know, for, for most of the world, well, not most of the world, but some of the some of the world, it's summer there as well. So it kind of really inspired me to kind of dive into this one. Thank you. 
All right. A little bit of a happy summer-esque vibe there for that one. <laughs> it's always a lot of fun to do that one. It just makes me feel like uh, I'm a kid again, you know? That's, well, that's really what guitar does for me, too. As I'm sure it does for many of you watching here today. But yeah, so I made another loop as well. Um, that I'll kind of want to try out as well and see see how comfortable that is for me. It's it's a song that I've been getting requests on um, quite a bit to turn it into a song. It's been it's been a few years now, and a lot of people have been begging me to do that. Uh, so I'll be kind of experimenting with that, but maybe I'll do that in a second here. I've been experimenting with more effects a little bit more uh, to kind of get just a different sort of um, effect. If you're listening with headphones, you kind of hear this sort of ping pong, like dotted eighth note sort of. It's a really cool sort of delay thing, and, and I kind of had it cranked up a little bit earlier. Let me show you what that would sound like. That's another, uh, that's a piece of mine called Synchro Destiny, but it was uh, played in uh, what feels like slow motion, <laughs> which is uh, always always a lot of fun to do because again, these, these effects just allow me to have a lot more space and really think about the melody.
All right, it really, and what, what you're hearing obviously is not just the, the guitar plugged in, you're hearing the microphone as well. So if you were just, if I was just to, to make it so you just hear this, you would hear just full sort of delay. I'll do a little loop here with this, see what I can do. very sort of light, I don't know, there's, there's always like, whenever I write these sorts of things, I'm always thinking about um, what sort of mood am I trying to go for, or what's the adjective that I'm trying to, to convey with this, you know? actually how the song Synchro Destiny was born. It came from this, this specific uh, chord progression. I remember doing sort of this sort of exact progression, with the B minor, with the bass note changing. But I would do it in a sort of a little bit of a different... Um,
Yeah, so that, that's sort of the uh, the idea behind Synchro Destiny anyway, those, those four sort of chords. Um, a lot of fun to do because, as you can see, there's, there's so much room to explore. Um, that's typically how I like to write these loop pedals, or the, these loop pedal songs, because it just, uh, the more simple they are, the more freedom you have to explore uh, different sort of ideas. Um, so here's a question. Uh, amazing work. It's really cool to listen to. What was your first composition? Uh, thank you for that question. The first composition, um, probably um, Synchro, not, not, not Synchro Destiny, uh, Southern Magnolia, I think. Southern Magnolia was definitely one of the first ones um, that got me into this idea of using my fingers uh, more. Because before that, I was just really using a, a pick, very heavily going into the pick. Um, and so some of you might know that piece. Let me just go to that tuning and maybe I'll play that uh, since, since I'm here in this tuning anyway. So Southern Magnolia, for those of you that don't know, is a love song that I wrote uh, many years ago. Uh, I lived in Texas, so it's dedicated to, uh, to someone that I uh, had a relationship with back then. Um, but it's still, it's a, it's a, it's, it's a lovely piece because in a, in a way it's a very simple piece uh, compared to a lot of my other stuff now as far as finger style uh, goes. And the idea came uh, more, more of, an, of an etude at first because the idea was to get this bass note here on autopilot. And then from here I would think of doing a melody. So eventually it came to this. From that and then eventually I kind of got into these sort of hammer-on pull-off I would just kind of do that eventually I would change fingers so even from that you can easily think of some ideas like sounds very Celtic. Alright, then eventually it kind of turned into this sort of uh, very melodic sort of driven piece that uh, a lot of it, the ideas came from, but most likely uh, the idea came from that and then the whole uh, song was born uh, from it. And the song goes like this.
<laughs> so that was Southern Magnolia, I, one of the first compositions that I really wrote. And when I first wrote it, I know that I didn't even do the percussive slaps in there. It was a purely uh, finger style, no percussion elements at all in it. A lot of fun. I just, I, I really like the key, this, this sort of specific uh, key and, and E. It's like an E major sort of shape. Uh, I've been kind of really messing around with that a lot. So it's been a, a lot of fun. So. <laughs> just Philip, <laughs> so take note, this is what my knowledge. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, it was simple at the time. I mean, com com in comparison to, you know, Cold Revival, which is definitely a lot more upbeat and more, more technical, technically advanced. But uh, yeah, and so uh, part of Southern Magnolia, I'll actually be teaching that uh, this, this rhythmic triplet, this section uh, in my upcoming master class as well, which I can't wait, can't wait to get in your hands because it's been too long. I've been working on it too long, trying to perfect everything but uh, it's it's so close and speaking of which I actually uh, have a promotion going on at my patreon page for any one who's looking to join um, as soon as you go to the patreon.com slash Benelli page you'll see that there's a special offer there at the top and that's basically you getting a free tab if you sign up uh, I think you got a few more days left before that if you are interested in that you get a free tab on the house that also goes for uh, any any existing patrons looking to upgrade as well. So I thought I'd mention that out there in case you are interested in that. So uh, here's a question from Steve. Do you play guitar slash practice every day? How about, I mean, how many hours a day do you play? Um, so I'll, I'll give you two sort of scenarios as far as how I would play and usually have my practice routine. Typically, what I would do uh, when I was first starting out, the first, let's say the first 10 years or so of playing the guitar, I've been playing for about 20 years now. Um, so the first 10 years, I would do so many scales. I, I would just, I was obsessed with playing scales. But not just playing it like this, um, I would really wanna explore them and play like triplets. Things like this. I was really interested in, in, in like sequence, sequential playing. And that sort of stuff. But really a lot of fun to do. Um, and so that was kind of my, my kind of routine. So I would really play uh, so many scales. Uh, up and down the fretboard. Uh, not just that, but I'll also do these sort of four finger things. Uh, four finger chromatic. Oh, holy reverb. Uh, so I would kind of do those sorts of things a lot too. And other than that, of course, I would then from there pra practice that for 30 minutes to an hour, um, going up and down the scales and things like this. Then I would eventually kind of get into more, uh, as I was saying with Southern Magnolia, I would keep that bass note going. And from here, I would kind of think, just how can I play scales in this? Right, while keeping this going, because now I'm kind of hitting two birds with one stone, I'm, I'm working on rhythm, but I'm also working on melody. the downbeat is always there. So I would kind of do that for, for maybe 30 minutes to an hour after that. Then from there, I would kind of get into the compositional sort of writing. It might be some sort of rhythmic idea. If it's some sort of thing like this, I would kind of explore this until I have some sort of groove uh, locked in. So if I had something like this, I would kind of explore this. So the exploration days, uh, which I don't really do too much in comparison, I would explore this. find what works. From here, I would just kind of explore over and over. So I would find a progression, for example, A minor.
keep in this sort of groove. Then slowly, I would just keep exploring. I would keep exploring, keep exploring until something was discovered. And that's how the song, my, one of my songs called Norim, was, was discovered. It was doing this. It's in a different tuning, but uh, it was this sort of rhythm. Right, really rhythmic. so forth so a lot of those ideas kind of came from that so a big part of my initial days of practicing was really just exploring as much as I could and a lot of that came from well playing chords like this you know after I was doing doing the scales rhythm exploring a little bit then I would kind of really really kind of double down on on making sure that I'm getting a, a routine I'm sort of practice routine I would kind of do these rolls, for example, and again, most of the time of me exploring something, a song was born out of that. Almost always from just experimenting. So, you know, anyone out there looking to find ways of exploring and compose your own pieces, the best way is really to have a lot of time on your hands to explore and, and do things that, that don't necessarily maybe sound good. Like if I were to do this, right, it might work in some, context but in this case I have this archive I have this memory now of this shape I kind of know what this shape would sound like so if I'm playing it right so I kind of have this I have, try to make a database in my head of all these shapes so then I can go back to it because the more of these shapes that you memorize the quicker it is that you can actually explore and say what you want to say uh, with your instrument so that's kind of my approach and so as far as um, that's kind of what I would do. Uh, but as far as the hours go, I, I, would, I would have played easily five to eight hours a day back then. Uh, now, nowadays, I tend to really, I tend to slack off a little bit more. I'm doing a lot more uh, administrative work for, for myself uh, with emails and, and messages and stuff like that. And uh, making sure that I have something to post every day and, and stuff like that. So and that, that's okay. I and mean, this is part of, of uh, uh, the modern musician, you know, it's not just being able to play your instrument anymore. It's you got to do so much more uh, rather than just play. You got to really be uh, present with the audience, uh, like I'm trying to do here today with you guys and, and answer some of these questions that you guys have. Um, so the, the modern musician is much different than the musician uh, from even 10 years ago. You know, the internet has really changed a lot of things and made us musicians need to, to put on several different hats in order for us to really. Uh, thrive in this world uh, of, of artists, you know, so that's kind of my my shift my shift as a musician's kind of happened uh, Towards that, but thankfully I'm still making time. I'm still dedicating all the time to writing my own music um, And what I like to do is I like to batch. I love to batch my work uh, So in this case, I can give you an example in last December. I recorded I think 15 or 20 songs don't remember exactly more or less recorded them all in my bedroom. Uh, I've got good mics and everything, so I was able to do that and get pretty good results. Um, that song, Celestial Home, uh, the recorded version was actually recorded in my bedroom. So it's, it's one of those things that, uh, it's what, amazing what post-production can do, you know, to make, make a song really sound like ma mixed and mastered and really ready for, for listening uh, pleasure and stuff like that. So I would record, I batch stuff, I record 10, 15 songs at a time, so I don't have to do it every month or so. I would do it once a year and have it ready to go for the whole year. Um, I just like to be as efficient as possible. Uh, efficiency is kind of my, uh, I, I really love that. I really love everything about efficiency. Uh, when it, even when playing guitar, when we're playing finger economy, keep your fingers as close as possible to the fret. You know, to play quick and things like that. So. Uh, trying to be as efficient as possible can can take its toll too. Not everyone has the uh, comfort level to do that. Uh, I will say though, I, I have I have been able to really schedule time to each part of being a musician uh, myself, and it's it's been it's been rewarding as well as well as as it has fulfilling. Because um, I guess success without fulfillment isn't really success at all, is it? Um, 
so I'm really trying to trying to be be have a fulfilled life because I think that's what all of us want, right? I mean, we all want to be fulfilled in life, not just successful. Successes can be a byproduct of that, or vice versa. So for me, fulfillment comes first, and and thankfully I have discovered the guitar, or the guitar has found me、uh, along my journey that I've been able to express myself through it. That was a much longer question than you probably were hoping for, but there you go. <laughs> But、uh, great question, I, I really appreciate that. And sometimes I go on tangents. When I get a question like that, I just want to share and share. So now、um, I want to I want to try this loop here and see what we can do with this guy. Do it on the first fret here.
<laughs> All right, hopefully you guys enjoyed that. That was a nice little uh, trip for me. <laughs> hopefully for you guys as well. Um, always so much fun to, to do this sort of stuff live because you never know which direction things are going to go. Um, and that's kind of part of it all, part of the improvisation uh, of it all. And if, again, it will, be, it will be forever etched into the world of uh, YouTube now because uh, now after this it will, be, it will be going there. Anyway, hopefully you guys enjoyed that. Uh, this was a good hour-long session and uh, thank you guys so much for, for tuning in. I really appreciate that. Appreciate all the support here. It's been a pleasure. And uh, yeah, so I, I'll probably do one next week. It seems like uh, a weekly thing so far. Uh, so it's a lot of fun. And again, if you do are interested in joining Patreon, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to be making all of these sort of backing tracks I played today uh, as backing tracks for my patrons to solo over as well uh, as a thank you to all of them. So thank you guys again. Really appreciate it. Hope you have a wonderful day ahead. I'm going to log off and uh, explore the guitar a little bit more and see uh, what I can do here for, for the next time we meet. Thank you, as always, and we'll see you next time.